It was a unique year in 2022 with two new entries into what some call an elite league of malware. That is malware targeting industrial machines, the ones that run our world, like our gas, power, and water. So what does it mean to have two new players in this hall of infamy now at a total of seven? We take a look at the impacts, plus what could happen in 2023. In the dark, with no heat, no lights, bombs rained down on Ukraine at the end of 2022, destroying power equipment and causing blackouts. But on April 8th, it was a cyber weapon at work, trying to do the same, but in a much quieter way. Cyber attackers tried to shut off power in an unidentified region late on a Friday afternoon. If they had been successful and if they had inflicted critical damage, that would have meant 2 million people without electricity supply when you talk about civilians, let alone commercial and other enterprises that are stationed in this region. Ukrainian defenders stopped the attack before it did its damage, but also uncovered the newest member of an exclusive group industrial malware designed to target the machines that bring cities to life and move ships, planes, gas, and water. Researchers called the new malware Indestroyer 2, after the original malware, Indestroyer, that did cause a power outage in Ukraine in December 2016. When we discover something that's as targeted as this, uh, it's definitely, you know, reason to, to be alert. Robert Lepofsky with security company ESET helped analyze in Destroyer 2. Very similar functionality. He says it's a slimmer version than the first in Destroyer, more focused, possibly designed to weed out errors from the first time around. Maybe they, they chose that doing it in a simpler fashion might be more effective. With it, the attackers also launched wiper malware to wipe or destroy systems to cover their own tracks and make it harder to get the power back on. No one should rest on their laurels. Behind both in destroyer attacks, he says, is Sandworm, a Russian military cyber attack group that has plagued Ukraine for years. Six alleged Sandworm members were indicted by the U.S. in 2020 for crimes targeting countries around the world, with the U.S. offering up a $10 million reward in 2022. So I would say no, not worry, but make sure that uh, you have the capability of detecting malware like this and, and thwarting uh, these incidents, similarly to what the Ukrainians have been able to do. Because with the situation that we are in, uh, it's not possible to rule out where these attackers might strike next. Five days after the Indestroyer 2 attack, a surprise announcement. Another industrial malware emerged. This one named InController, or Pipe Dream, depending on the company writing up the research. There is little information on who found it and how or where it came from, but researchers say it could have a big impact on industrial machines. We're seeing more modern versions of these malwares, so the code's a little cleaner, and the uh, reality of them being able to be successful is a little higher, so you, you kind of perk up a little bit, you go, wow, like the, the, the malware writers are getting smarter. <laughs> An April advisory says it can take over and control critical devices, even allowing attackers to see a mirrored view of the control screen and run the machines from afar. It was caught before it was deployed. As far as we know, there's no victims of this, so that's a good thing, but we still have to analyze it and see what the impact could be and that it could potentially cause major issues if actually this type of malware were deployed. It's very likely state-sponsored, said security company Mandiant, and represents an exceptionally rare and dangerous cyber attack capability. It can lead to a loss of safety, availability, and control of an industrial environment, said security company Dragos, potentially placing lives, livelihoods, and communities at risk. These people are up to no good. I mean, they are, they're trying to get into industrial controls and do bad stuff. We don't see any evidence of like what the real payload or end goal is, but they're looking. And to me, that's significant. Researchers say both in controller and in destroyer two can be reworked and reused for other targets. I think everybody, especially when it's critical infrastructure or even advanced manufacturing, there's just so many physical real world ramifications of these types of uh, malware that it's always a little scary. 
The April advisory recommends companies take steps to protect their systems, such as making sure they have strong passwords, using multi-factor authentication, the extra login step to protect the accounts, separating the industrial computers from the office computers, which can be easily hacked with a phishing email, and monitoring systems to see if attackers get in and what they may do inside. Step three, get rid of all the utilities, gas, water, electric, nuclear. Experts say attackers can't cut off power to entire countries, as you might see in the movies, and utilities are working to protect their systems. So massive industrial attacks are not likely or imminent for most people, even with two new members in the elite league of malware. There have been disruptions in basic utility service. We don't see malware that impacts control systems very often, but it's just something that should not alarm us. We should just be aware. We don't need to run around and scream, the sky is falling, because in Ukraine it actually is falling there. They're still being bombed to this date. So what could happen in 2023? Some experts say instead of making new industrial malware, attackers could repurpose what they already have. More likely would be simply ransomware, the malware that holds systems hostage, like what happened to a gas pipeline in Europe in 2022, a water company in the UK, a tire maker in the US, and many others. Ransomware doesn't target the industrial side like in Destroyer 2 and in Controller, but it can have spillover effects on the industrial side that can make things more complex. In Mexico, Carrie Tomlinson for Ampere News.